All right, let's discuss this uh, PEA part, peak extractive flow rate meter. Yeah, okay. usually we have got uh, two parts. This is the device itself, and uh, this is the mouthpiece. Okay. Yeah, so we we'll attach it here, mm -hmm. and there are certain uh, things that we have to consider. First is make sure uh, this pointer it should be at this end. Yeah, and we should not be obstructing this outflow. Always, whenever you are using it, make sure you are sitting upright or you are standing. Whatever position is okay for you, you can use that. But make sure you take all the readings in the same position while sitting or standing up, uh, standing or sitting upright. All right. So you have to hold it like this horizontally. Make sure you are not obstructing this uh, uh, flow, this meter, not these lines, and not this pointer, and not putting your hand on the outflow as well. So you can hold it like this. Yeah, and sit upright. And now what you have to do is you have to take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in and make a tight seal around this uh, mouthpiece. And you have to blow as hard as fast you can. All right. Okay. So let me show it to you once. So like this. Yeah. So we will be uh, getting one reading. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is you have to take three readings in the morning. And you have to take three readings in the evening time. And you have to plot the highest reading on the graph or on the asthma diary. Okay. I'll show you how to use that asthma diary as well. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, three readings in the morning, three in the evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So could you please do once for me? Okay. All right. That's for you. All right. Yeah. So this is how we use it, yeah? So okay. just keep it horizontal and we have to blow as hard as fast we can. Okay. All right, that's good one. Okay, so let me show you what exactly uh, we need in this. Uh, actually, this is a graph. This is a graph for peak flow meter, yeah? So this graph will tell us what is our normal value, okay. yeah? So for this, we need to have three things. Uh, first, we need to know the age of the patient. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have to have uh, the height of the patient and whether, and also we should know whether the patient is a male or a female. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, for you, you are, uh, your height is? 190 centimeter. 190 centimeter. Age? 22. So, no, 190, 22. And consider, okay, if we have a male patient. Okay. So, if we plot a graph here, uh, age, this is the height, man. So it comes somewhat here around uh, 610, 620. Okay. Yeah. So for a male patient whose height is 190 centimeter, age is 22, mm -hmm. uh, it, the graph will show the value with roughly 610, 620. Yeah. But the thing is, whatever value we got uh, with this uh, peak flow expiratory rate, uh, it should be like 75 to 80 percent of this normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our aim is not to achieve 610 or 620 for this patient. Mm -hmm. Our aim is to achieve roughly around uh, 75 to 80 percent. Yeah. And what we give actually, we give uh, all the time this asthma diary to our patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This asthma diary actually it is used for two weeks. So as it's like written Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this is for one week. This is for another week. And here uh, we can see it's AM, PM reading. Yeah. So it's morning, evening. Yeah. So as we discussed, you have to take three readings in the morning, three in the evening, and you're going to plot the highest one on this graph. There are four columns here. Like uh, uh, you have to uh, use all this stuff. Uh, for example, if you have to use the reliever inhaler, I'll be discussing with this inhaler also in a while. This is the brown one, and this is uh, the blue one. So what happens is if we are using the reliever one, yeah, the blue one, so we have to make it tick in these boxes. For example, if you used it in the Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever, you just make a tick in that relevant box. That second one is if you had asthma symptoms, such as we know the symptoms of asthma, shortness of breath, chest tightness, coughing or wheezing. So any of these symptoms present, so we just make a tick in the relevant box. Same if you're, walk, if you're waking up in the night because of asthma symptoms, you'll make a tick. If you are feeling that you can't cope up with your normal day-to-day -day activities, you'll make another tick. So this is how we have to use this asthma diary. And on the bottom, if you can see, this is a weekly comment box. Weekly comment box is uh, like, uh, for example, you had to use uh, uh, this reliever inhaler or you had any of these symptoms, but you have got a reason for it. For example, like you were stressed, maybe there was a pet at your home, or you exercise a lot for that particular week. So you can give that reason here. Mm -hmm. Because it will be helpful for the GP or for your doctor. Why? Because if that there is a reason behind it, they may not be making any changes in your medication. But if there is 
uh, no reason, then maybe we have to make some changes. Otherwise, we can just continue with the same medication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we have this weekly comment box. Mm -hmm. So this is how we have to use this asthma diary. And usually this one page is for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this was asthma diary. All right. So let's discuss uh, uh, briefly about these inhaler as well and uh, how to use the inhaler. So usually we have these two. This is the blue one and the brown one. Mm -hmm. This is a reliever. It relieves our symptoms and this is preventer. Mm -hmm. So let's take this one first. Uh, this is actually a salbutamol. Uh, it relieves our uh, symptoms. Whenever a patient has got any symptom like chest tightness or any wheezing or cough regarding this asthma symptoms, I mean, so we have to use that one. It helps to dilate our airways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to take one to two puff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to take one to two puff, and as we know. Like any other medication, this medication also has got uh, some side effects. Uh, the main side effects are like uh, sometimes patients might feel tremor mm -hmm. or muscle cramps or headache. Yeah, all these are like minor symptoms. Usually, we'll go after some time. Yeah, if not, uh, maybe you can contact your GP and they will help you out in uh, tackling up these uh, side effects. Okay. All right. So whenever we have the symptom, we have to take this that time. Yeah, it's not used regularly. That's why the name is reliever. Yeah, blue one is a standard color coding, blue. The second one, it's actually brown. It's actually a steroid. Beclomethasone, it's a steroid in it. Mm -hmm. And it's a preventer. So it helps to prevent the symptoms. You have to take it regularly. According to the dose, you have to see like how much dose is being prescribed. Yeah, for example, if uh, they're saying we have to take 400 microgram BV, meaning you have to take uh, 400 microgram two times. Yeah, so we have to see uh, what's the dose of this uh, inhaler. You might see in the exam, it might be 100 is one puff or 200 one puff. So accordingly, we have to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. for example, if it is 200 and in the exam, they have given 400 microgram BD. So meaning you have to take two puff in the morning, two puff in the evening time. Yeah, this is how we have to use it. So as it is a steroid, the, how it works is it helps to uh, decrease the swelling or inflammation of our airway. And also, it helps to decrease the secretions of our airway. This is the function of this uh, inhaler. And as we know, like this inhaler or any other medication, this also has got some, some side effects. Usually, side effects is uh, sometimes we have some uh, infection in our mouth. Yeah? But if you rinse your mouth or brush your teeth after every use, then we can tackle uh, those side effects. So usually it's advisable, uh, we can keep this in our washroom. So we remember it after every use that we have to rinse up our mouth with uh, water. Yeah, so this is how we can tackle this side effect. Now, how to use it? Yeah, so how to use this uh, inhaler? So what to do first of all, just shake it well. Yeah, shake it well, and we can check the expiry date as well. So if it is expired or not, we can check it from here, then put it back. Uh, for example, if you have not used it for some time, as I discussed, like this is we are using daily, but this is uh, we have to use whenever we have the symptoms. So if you have not used it for long, after shaking it, you can just make a puff in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it is ready to use. So what we have to do, we have to hold it like this upright, not, not like this, it should be like this. Yeah, so what we have to do, first you will uh, breathe out, yeah. And then you have to take this in your mouth. Yeah. So when you're taking this in your mouth, what you have to do is when you're taking your breath in, you have to press this canister once. Mm -hmm. If you have to take two puff, still you will take one and then one after that. You cannot take two together. All right, I'll show you. So breathe in and then out. Take it in your mouth and make a tight seal. And when you're pressing this canister, take the breathing in. Yeah, and then you have to hold your breath for 10 seconds or more if you can. Okay. Yeah, it depends on person to person. If they can take it for like 10 seconds, it's okay. If they can hold it for more than that, that's also fine. If you have to take another puff, wait for a few seconds and repeat the same procedure again. Yeah, so we should not take two puffs together like that is wrong. Why? Because you will not get enough medication in your airways mm -hmm. and uh, the medication may not be sufficient. Yeah. So we might be thinking that uh, your asthma symptoms are not controlled. Uh, we think uh, our medication is not enough. Mm -hmm. Usually the people, those who are having this, uh, you know, acute exacerbation of asthma or any problem because of, uh, I mean, this asthma, uh, usually the reason behind is they don't know how to use the inhaler. They don't know how to use uh, 
maybe the spacers that I'll explain it in short while. So the main reason is not knowing the exact technique. So make sure we use it uh, in, a, in a nice way, in a nice manner, and this is the technique. So one puff at a time, yeah. All right, so these are the inhalers. Let's discuss a bit about these spacers as well. Usually we have to uh, use these spacers in case of children, mm -hmm. yeah. And also like uh, the people those are having this uh, asthma symptoms, acute exacerbation and uh, again and again. So we can use in those people as well. Also like uh, mentally challenged people. So mm -hmm. they may not be able to understand how to use these uh, inhalers straight away. So maybe we can use these uh, spacer. And these actually comes in different, different sizes. <clears throat> the smallest one, orange color. This is a yellow and a blue one. This is actually for the children age from uh, uh, zero to 18 months. Till 18 months we can use. As you can see, the size is also very small. Yeah, This one is actually for uh, one year to five year old children. One year to five year. And you can see like this is still 18 months, one to five years. So for if the child is like 13, 14 months, you can use any one of mm -hmm. these, depending on the fish, uh, I mean, how big is the face of the child. Yeah, And this one like uh, more than five years. So if more than five years, we can use this one. No problem. So for the adults also, we can use this one. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me show you how we have to use it. <clears throat> so, just a second. Okay, actually, this uh, spacer it has got uh, four parts. Mm -hmm. This is a mouthpiece, and if you can see, there's a valve here. Yeah, and this is aero chamber, mm -hmm. and this is inhaler port. Yeah, we have to put our inhaler here. So, one thing you have to make sure when you're using it uh, this uh, valve, mm -hmm. and there's a pointer here. You can see mm -hmm. so these should be in the same plane because we have to attach our inhaler here okay. I'll show you how uh, like this it will be attached mm -hmm. but again what you have to make sure uh, this uh, you have shaked it well and you have checked the expiry date yeah and then put it here this is how we have to use it make sure this inhaler and this valve they're the same plane yeah so what we have to do in this so whenever we are giving this uh, inhaler with the help of this spacer to a child make sure a child should not cry that time. yeah because if child is crying then he will not or she will not get enough medication so maybe uh, we can take the child in the lab cuddle them and make them comfortable yeah once they are comfortable then we have to use this device what we have to do uh, we have to put this mouthpiece on their mouth like this make sure you cover the nose as well so cover the nose and the mouth like this yeah, and make sure there is a tight seal. So how will be making sure there is a tight seal? You can see the movement of this valve. This valve will move with your child's breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is what we have to do. Once you are sure that there is a tight seal with the help of this uh, movement of this valve, then you have to press the canister once. Yeah, so then you have to press this once. Mm -hmm. After that, let your child take five to six breath. Don't remove it straight away your child will not get enough medication. What you have to do after making sure there is a tight seal, you have to press the canister once and then wait for five to six breaths. And you can count it from here, looking at this valve. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so once you have done it, then it's done. Yeah, and then you can take this out. If you have to use uh, another time, for example, if you have to take like, if you have to give two puff or three puff, wait for 30 seconds and repeat the same procedure again okay. yeah so this is how we have to use this spacer yeah and there are a few things more that we have to remember for example before you use this uh, spacer make sure it should not broken yeah if there's anything like uh, any uh, thing like you feel like it's broken or if there is any foreign body inside mm -hmm. so make sure if there's a foreign body take that out if it is broken don't use it take the new one mm -hmm. yeah very important Secondly, so how to wash it? Lots of um, uh, patients they have this question: How to wash it? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is very simple. Take this inhaler port out. Uh, you can rinse it in lukewarm soapy water. Lukewarm soapy water for uh, 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and after that, just let it air dry. That's it. Nothing you have to do. You don't have to boil it. You don't have to scrub it. Nothing. Simply rinse it in lukewarm soapy water 10-15 minutes mm -hmm. and after that maybe under uh, clean water for some time like 5 mm -hmm. minutes and then just keep it. Let it air dry, dip dry. Don't use any towel, any other device, don't boil nothing. Yeah, and uh, how often you have to wash it, maybe like, uh, it depends actually on the usage. Yeah, but maybe like once or twice per week we can wash it. And it's always better like if you can change it like after every 6 months or 1 year. 
or depending like you may have to change it for real because if it's if it's broken or if there's any foreign body yeah so this is how we have to use it and for example if your children if the child is going to school so make sure uh, you tell the nurses in the school also like uh, my child is having this problem and you can leave one of the spacer at school as well yeah so maybe the the nurses or the teachers there they can help the, the child out if there is any problem all right so this is a spacer okay so three kinds of spacer i just oops sorry all right so what we have to three kinds of space the yellow one it is still five uh, this is one to five years this is uh, zero to 18 months and this is more than five years we have to use this. yeah all right thank you